about 70% of the surgery I do is reconstructive. A large part of that is with flaps and transferring tissues uh, with either microsurgical or pedicle flap techniques. So one of the things that we do worry about with reconstructive techniques when removing flaps of tissue is whether the tissue will survive or not, whether the wound edges will heal, whether there'll be infections. So there's a lot of things that go into the planning of these procedures and execution to avoid those types of problems. Spine angiography is a revolutionary technology which is really going to change the face of reconstructive plastic surgery. Everything we do in plastic surgery relates to blood supply, uh, whether it's a flap of t skin that we're trying to raise up, whether it's a tissue we're trying to move. In order for an operation to be successful, there has to be excellent blood supply. And if you can secure the blood supply and ensure that you're really uh, doing the best operation for the patient and have feedback about it at the time of the surgery, I think that's invaluable for patients. We've never really had any technology that has been able to directly look at blood supply in the operating room. That really has lasted or has withstood the test of time. Spine geography allows the practicing surgeon to use a technology to look at perfusion right in front of their eyes at any time of the operation they want. In fact, you can do it multiple times. And for the first time, we see not only primary areas of perfusion, but we can also, through spike technology, see secondary areas of perfusion, things we've always hypothesized but have never really been able to see before. And I think the greatest utility of SPI sometimes is not even in free tissue transfer. It's in local tissue rearrangements. We used to just think that it was random and you needed a certain size flap, a certain width, and a certain length of a flap to get it to survive, but we know better now. We know there's angiosomes. We know there's perforating vessels. And if you have a, a tissue that's very thin, a centimeter, a centimeter and a half, it might be a thigh or an arm or lower leg where you're doing a random flap, SPI will show you the perforators. You'll see exactly where they are. It allows me to make the decisions in the operating room. I'm not relying on a radiologist to tell me what the anatomy is or what perfusion is. I'm looking at it in real time and making decisions based on it. I think that it also is a very easy and simple thing to do. Uh, there's no big C-arms that need to be moved in. There's l very little, if any, risk to the patient uh, that I've seen. And so it's a relatively benign procedure that can give you a lot of information. And we're even looking at it now as a possibility to use even before the surgery has even happened to see if it can help us plan to look for perforators and look for blood vessels. We're just beginning to tap the real power of this technology. So I feel like we're just at the beginning. We're on the cusp of something really, really big. What's good for the patients is that they're going to get improved outcomes. So I think it's a powerful tool. I think it gives people that experience before they even have the experience. And I think for experienced physicians, it just gives them even more tools and even more data to make their decisions. The trickiest part of doing plastic surgery and reconstructive surgery is that you can know how to do a procedure, and you can know where to make the marks, and you can know how to do the dissection. People's anatomy is variable. Even in the cases where we know there's an artery here and here's the perfusion, spine shows you that.